Can I remind members to please ensure their mobile phones are switched off for the duration of this meeting as they interfere with the broadcasting equipment, even when on silent mode? The purpose of today's meeting is to consider the supplementary estimate for the Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation for 2018, referred by the DAW to this committee on the 21st of November, with an instruction to report back to the DAW not later than the 12th of December. I would like to welcome Minister for Business, Enterprise and Innovation, Heather Humphreys, and her officials to this meeting and thank them for the briefing material provided to the committee. I propose that the following arrangements apply to the debate. Minister Humphreys will make a brief address to the committee and we can then consider the subheads relevant to the supplementary estimate. Is that agreed? I would ask members to indicate the subhead to which they are referring and the page in the department's briefing, if relevant, when contributing, if possible. Before we begin, members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that members should not comment on, criticise or make charges against either a person outside the houses or an official either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. I now call on the Minister to make her opening statement. Gorf Mahagutara. Uh, uh, my thanks to you, Akihirla, uh, for the opportunity to present my Department's 2018 Supplementary Estimate to the Select Committee this afternoon. I wish to convey the apologies of my colleagues Minister John Halligan and Pat Breen, who unfortunately can't be here due, uh, due to other engagements. I understand that my officials have provided the Committee Secretariat with a briefing note setting out the background to the Supplementary Estimate. Estimates. I would propose to take a few minutes to bring the members of the committee through the detail of the estimate. As you would have seen from the briefing note, the supplementary estimate before the committee this afternoon does not involve uh, the provision of any additional exchequer monies over and above the 870.96 million uh, voted to my department in the 2018 revised estimates volume. Rather, the supplementary estimate uh, is seeking permission to redistribute 26.37 million in sales savings of the Department's vote this year to support a number of enterprise and innovation initiatives. The supplementary estimate is technical in its nature as the aforementioned package of $26.37 million has already provided for uh, from within the monies already voted to my Department. As advised, it is proposed that the $26.37 million package will be redistributed to fund a number of focused enterprise and innovation initiatives. Uh, specifically, the supplementary estimate will provide an additional 15.63 million euros in enterprise supports, including the funding of, a 50, of 15 million euros to roll out the first phase of the future growth loan scheme. Additional funding of 160,000 to support the credit guarantee scheme and an additional funding of 470,000 to support the local enterprise offices. The remaining 10.74 million of the supplementary package will be targeted at supporting the department's innovation program including by providing additional capital funding of $8.74 million to Science Foundation Ireland to fund critically needed research projects and, and providing a further $2 million uh, to the programme for, for research in third level institutions to discharge liabilities under Cycle 5 of that programme. As announced at budget time, my department has been working with the Department of Finance and Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine and in conjunction with the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland and the European Investment Bank Group to develop develop a long-term credit facility for Irish businesses to enable them to strategically invest in a post-Brexit environment. To that end, the Future Growth Loan Scheme will provide funding of €300 million Euros to eligible businesses to meet their long-term credit needs for investment purposes. The Exchequer contribution to the scheme will involve funding of €37 million from my department and €25 million from the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, and this will allow the SBCI to leverage an overall fund of up to €300 million Euros from the European Investment Fund. Under the scheme, a percentage of the loan uh, portfolio will be guaranteed by the state, thereby, thereby increasing the risk appetite of the finance providers. The scheme will also leverage a counter-guarantee from the EIB, thus reducing the overall risk of exposure to the state. In this regard, 80% of the loan portfolio would be guaranteed by SBCI, supported by the funding from my department and the Department of Agriculture. It is intended that this will be offset by a 64% guarantee from the EIB group through the European Fund for Strategic Investment, uh, reducing the overall cost to the state. Due to this bespoke nature of the proposed arrangement with the European Investment Fund, I, as Minister for Business, Business Enterprise and Innovation, together with the Minister for Agriculture, Food and Marine, will need to enter into a mandate agreement with the European Investment Fund. 
This represents the first time that the ministers have entered into such an agreement and as such will require a primary legislation. The committee will be aware that necessary legislation permitting ministers to enter into such agreements has been introduced into the House and I look forward to discussing details of the legislation with members at committee stage next week. With the cooperation of the committee, it is hoped that the legislation will be enacted before the end of the year, which in turn will facilitate the introduction of the Future Growth Loan Scheme in early 2019. The scheme will provide low-cost loans for terms of between 8 to 10 years, which are currently not readily available on the market. No collateral will be required for loans of 500,000 or less. The scheme will include uh, the primary agriculture and the seafood sector and will be easy to, to access, competitively priced and will be at more favourable terms than current offerings on the market. An open call process to select the participating finance providers for the future loan, uh, growth loan scheme is expected to start before the year end. The provision of 15 million through the supplementary estimate will ensure that the necessary funding is in place to roll out the first phase of the scheme which is expected to launch in 2019 and the scheme is expected to run for three years from its launch date. The new Future Growth Loan Scheme represents a significant addition to the suite of existing finance supports which have been developed by my department to specifically meet the identified needs of businesses, particularly those SMEs and micro-enterprises who are impacted by Brexit, including the revised Credit Guarantee Scheme, Microfinance Ireland Scheme, the Enterprise Ireland Seed and Venture Capital Scheme and the Short Term Brexit Working Capital Loan Scheme. In terms of existing supports, provision has also been made in the supplementary estimates package to provide an additional 160,000 in 2018 to support the revised credit guarantee scheme. The credit guarantee scheme provides for state risk sharing with the banks and thereby supports SMEs in accessing um, uh, bank finance. The scheme has over the past five uh, and a half years encouraged banks to uh, sanction 580 facilities and approve over 93 million euro in loans and thus has helped to create and maintain more than 3,650 jobs. A detailed review of the scheme was undertaken to make the guarantee more accessible to uh, SMEs and open to other finance providers and products. The revised scheme was formally launched in July 2018. The revisions up to the scheme were focused on encouraging more lending to SMEs and and in particular to address a number of identified barriers to SMEs uh, accessing mainstream finance, including difficulties in providing adequate collateral, novel business markets and refinancing requirements arising from the exit of an, ex of a, of an existing SME lender from the Irish market. Some of the key features of the revised scheme include the availability of facilities between 10,000 up to 1 million euros, terms of up to seven years, and the availability of different types of facilities such as term loans, demand loans, and performance bonds. The additional 160,000 being provided through the supplementary estimate will in part further support the guarantee under which claims from the finance providers are paid in respect of any increase in defaulting loans arising from increased activity under the revised scheme. The additional funding will also help to cover the once-off set-up costs arising from the launch of the revised scheme. Local enterprise offices. The other enterprise support in the supplementary estimate relates to the local enterprise office who are being provided with an additional 470,000 in capital monies to enable them to meet the increasing demand for their services, particularly in the area of mentoring, training and developmental programmes. The local enterprise offices are one of the primary regional enterprise supports for entrepreneurs, early stage promoters, startups and small businesses looking to expand. The Leos are focused on on helping people to deliver on their business ideas, thereby ensuring that the development of local enterprise, putting local, micro and small businesses at the heart of job creation in Ireland. The additional 470,000 will be targeted at specific Brexit-related related requests for support from the Leos, including increasing requests for technical assistance from micro exporters to support market diversification and qualifying businesses to develop new and export market opportunities, and also a greater demand for lean for micro support to help businesses to adopt lean business practices, to increase competitiveness together with the rollout of additional Brexit seminars, to raise the awareness of businesses of their exposure and to develop robust Brexit plans. Innovation supports. As advised, the supplementary estimates package includes an additional 10.74 million in innovation supports. It is intended that this additional funding will be directed at two important innovation programmes, namely Science Foundation Ireland's Research Infrastructure Programme and Cycle 5 of the programme for research in th third level institutions. 
This will provide much needed additional capital investment into the research system and in particular into our universities and colleges. The distribution of this 10.74 million will be uh, distributed by providing an additional 8.7 million for SFI's research infrastructure programme and a further 2 million to meet existing commitments under cycle 5 of the PRTLI. Research infrastructure is a vital tool for our research communities in conducting research and fostering innovation in their fields. Included here is the specialist equipment that is essential for high quality research, particularly in STEM disciplines. The SFI Research Infrastructure Call is currently the principal mechanism for funding research equipment needed by our colleges. We are keen to support as many of the high quality proposals that have been reviewed for quality and impact by SFI. The additional 8.7 million will allow SFI to fund a number of additional projects from its 2018 research infrastructure call over and above those that will be funded through SFI's ex 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 existing capital allocation. The host institutions will, will benefit from the increased allocation are uh, NUI Maynooth, Trinity College Dublin, the Tyndall uh, National Institute at University College Cork. The additional uh, 2 million for cycle 5 of PRTLI will address existing financial commitments under that programme. The PRTLI has facilitated Ireland's higher education institutions to produce world class research in strategic areas such as biomedical sciences, ICT, energy, environment, advanced communications, and materials. Materials. And it has been very, a very important programme for creating the foundation investment upon which investments by SFI and our other funding agencies now build. 33 capital building projects were funded under Cycle 5 and are all complete. 13 structured PhD programmes were also funded, providing over 330 PhD student places. The payment of £2 million from the supplementary estimate will further reduce our outstanding commitments under the PRTLI Cycle 5 programme. The additional £10.74 million being provided to the department's innovation programs through this supplementary estimate will help us to deliver on our innovation 2020 targets and commitments and will contribute to job creation and enterprise growth. This investment can be considered alongside recent increases in the last number of budgets in the funding of for department's innovation uh, programme, not least in budget 2019 which has ensured that the department is in a, bit, in a position to roll out. The commencement of the new 500 million euro disruptive technologies innovation fund through a 20 million allocation in um, 2019, a new programme of investment in PhD researchers through SFI centres for research or training. This takes over from what has been a key element of the previous Cycle 5 PR TLI uh, that I just mentioned. Other investment in SFI research centres and other SFI programmes. Finally, we have increased investment through international bodies such as the European Space Agency and the European Southern uh, Observatory. Taking this investment together, I'm happy to report that we are making very solid progress in delivering on the Department's commitments in Innovation 2020. All of this is complementing private sector investment in R&D, which is a point that needs uh, to be also borne in mind. Funding, uh, other, uh, funding the supplementary estimate as advised, this sub supplementary estimate is technical in its nature. It involves the redistribution of 26.37 million in savings from within the department's 2018 voted allocation of 870.96 million. To put it in context, the supplementary estimates package represents approximately 3% of our overall gross allocation for 2018. The majority of the savings funding the supplementary estimate arise in relation to Enterprise Ireland's enterprise development programmes. In this regard, Enterprise Ireland is expected to generate savings in the region of 24.4 million on these programmes in 2018. Enterprise Ireland takes equity shares in the companies it supports. On an annual basis, this typically yields significant funding called agency own resource income. In recent years, this has been in excess of 70 million euros per annum. Enterprise Ireland is permitted, subject to the approval and sanction of Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, to retain and use own resource income in support of enterprise development. 2018 has been another good year for Enterprise Ireland uh, own, own, um, or, um, sorry, own resource income, uh, with a significant uh, quantum of additional own resource income expected to be generated by year end. Under public expenditure rules, Enterprise Ireland is required to expend a ORI before it draws down exchequer funds. Accordingly, this, uh, uh, this sure fit of ORI generated by EI um, in 2018 means that it will not need to call on its full exchequer 
capital allocation of 63 million under subhead A7 of the department's vote and uh, consequentially there will be a savings on this subhead. Aside from the additional ORI which EI uh, expects to generate in 2018, there are a number of other factors contributing to the saving on this subhead including slower than anticipated drawdown of grants by EI clients. In this regard, it is important to appreciate that the grants EI client companies are, are, are demand-led and are typically multi-annual in nature, usually over a three to four year period. Grant expenditure is therefore dependent on the Enterprise Ireland client companies adhering to and delivering on certain terms, conditions associated with the Enterprise Ireland grants, delivering certain number of jobs uh, or export sales, etc. Good corporate governance in relation to the public finances means that Enterprise Ireland cannot nor should not pay out grant funding until expenditure claims have been submitted by the client companies and properly vetted by Enterprise Ireland. Furthermore, some client companies will choose to submit their funding requests to Enterprise Ireland Ireland when it best suits the company's own cash flow needs. Therefore, Enterprise Ireland is not in full control of all elements relating to expenditure across its grant programmes. This adds to the complexity to management of public monies which are provided for in a single financial estimates year running from the 1st of January to the 31st of December each year. Insofar as grants experience in uh, 2018 is concerned, whilst grants to pro grant approvals have been in line with target, the level of claims received from clients in relation to approved projects has been less than forecast. It is expected, however, that these claims should be received in the course of 2019. The other elements of savings contributing to the supplementary estimates concern the Interreg Enterprise Development Programme, which is an EU programme designed to promote cross-border research and innovation initiatives for the period 2016 to 2022. My department provides matching funding in cooperation with our counterpart department in Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland Executive, that is the Department for the Economy. DBI is committed to paying 21 million over the seven years of the programme, 85 per cent of which will eventually be uh, reimbursed by the EU. Funding of 3 million was allocated to Interreg for 2018, of which just 1.03 million will be spent by the year end. The amounts drawn down in each year can fluctuate due to a range of factors. The rate of drawdown is usually slow in the earlier years, with more funding being drawn down from the middle to the end of the seven-year period. However, an underspend in any year will result in an increase spent in subsequent years. Accurate forecasting for Interreg can be problematic because it is a multi-annual seven-year programme with the special EU programmes body who run the programme uh, are, are working with three different accounting timeframes. More specific difficulties have arisen in 2016 to 2022 programme due to the political situation in Northern Ireland. There were significant delays in getting projects up and running uh, due to administrative delays in the Northern Ireland system. The Brexit decision caused an eight-month delay which had an on effect on the programme into late last year and this made accurate forecasting for the 2018 spend more difficult. Implementation of the Interreg programme will catch up with the original schedule over the next few years and all projects will be completed in full by 2023. This delay which caused the underspend merely changes the sequencing of payments but will not impact on the successful completion of the programme. It should be noted also that completion of the programme will not be affected by the UK leaving the EU as the UK government has committed to providing funds to replace the EU contribution after 2019. So I will leave it there, Aka Hirlock, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the members of the committee may have and thank you. Thank you very much Minister. <clears throat> I might start myself and I'm going to commence with, um, we'll stick to programme A to begin if we can members and the first question I want to ask you in relation to, and you explained it very well, subhead A7, Enterprise Ireland savings of 24.4 million and you did explain it there where, where, where this income has come from, own resource income. And my question is, is in relation um, with, with, Bre with Brexit looming on us uh, very, very shortly. Was there any consideration given to maybe um, directing some of that funding into uh, more staff to be prepared for, 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 for Brexit? I know we heard last year that there was monies allocated to additional staff um, in Enterprise Ireland and in IDA. And I'm just wondering, that's just one question, do you feel you're sufficiently staffed now for Brexit or was there any consideration given to... Um, moving some of that money to, for, for, for further staff. Uh, 
Thank you, um, Cahir. Look, just to say that we did employ, we did, we increased the, the 2018 budget uh, to employ uh, extra staff, uh, um, and which they did do. I think almost uh, 100 extra staff between the two agencies, uh, and uh, uh, so they, they have got more boots on the ground uh, uh, abroad. Is mainly where they have them because they're looking for new markets, uh, especially Enterprise Ireland seeking out new markets. IDA looking for new opportunities, and Brexit. Uh, there are opportunities around Brexit as well, even though there's a lot of downsides to it. So uh, we have more boots on the ground uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, from Budget 2019, an additional £8 million in current monies is being provided to my department, of which £3 million is being allocated to Enterprise Ireland to drive its plans uh, for the global footprint. So that will allow them again. We're saying to companies, you've got to uh, you know, uh, get ready for Brexit. And the, what you need to do is you need to diversify into new markets. That takes time. So Enterprise Ireland are there to assist them to scale up and to export uh, and, and get new markets abroad. Thank you, Minister. Um, my next question is in relation to the, the Future Growth Loan Scheme, which I welcome the £15 million, um, for the new capital provision. And as you explained, low-cost loans between 8 to 10 years and no collateral necessary. Um, I suppose the question is, how long do you expect it to take businesses to be approved for loans under this scheme? And sometimes, uh, you know, as businesses find the whole process of applying for lo loans, they feel they have to jump through hoops. Will it be a, a, a reasonable um, application, I suppose, is the question. Do, do you expect much of a drawdown on it? Yeah, well, the first thing, um, um, the, the way the, wor the loans work, we have the, we have the working capital facility at the minute, which is a 300 million euro fund, and now this is the, 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 the long-term loan, that's what we're putting the, money for, uh, putting the money aside for, is to provide for the 300 million long-term loan, which is uh, to cover terms from 8 to 10 years. Uh, we ex uh, uh, first of all, the first thing you have to do is you have to apply to the SBCI to see if you're eligible, and you'll get that turnaround answer in 24 hours. And then... Uh, when you're when you have when you're eligible for it, you apply for the loans through the pillar bank. So that's either AIB, Bank of Ireland, or Ulster Bank. So then you put the application into them, and uh, obviously uh, that uh, they will make the assessment then. But the fact that uh, they're allowed to loan up to 500 million on secured or 500,000 on secured is, is a huge uh, amount of money, especially over a longer term. Uh, so we're, we're um, you know I, I imagine there'll be there'll be uh, you know a fairly keen interest in this. This loan because it's it's actually filling a, a gap in the market at the minute because you, it's find businesses are finding it difficult to access finance in excess of seven years. This will stretch it out to eight to ten years, and um, it's uh, the maximum loan is three million, so that's a, a considerable amount of money. Uh, so uh, as I said, uh, 24 hours turnaround with SBCI as to approved, and then you put your application into the bank, and uh, they they'll make the assessment. Then it, it has to go through the normal lending criteria or the normal lend lending assessment. Okay, thank you, Minister. And do you, d does the department plan on taking out um, an advertisement campaign in, rem yeah. in relation to this yeah. um, growth loan scheme so that people would be aware of small and medium enterprises who mightn't be aware of it? Yeah, uh, we will do. And uh, I, I think you might have heard the, 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 um, the campaign on the radio for the 300 million euro working capital facility, which is a, a three-year term and it's, a, it's, it's like overdraft facility, really. And you can, uh, it's, it's at 4% uh, interest rate. Uh, we did a good bit of advertising on that, and then uh, we'll do the same on this long term one. And I'd say to the deputies, I'll send you all notice of it whenever it's, uh, whenever it's, it's approved. We have to go through the legislative process first. I'll send you a note on it, and uh, you, I'd be happy if you want to put it, uh, yeah. advertise it as much as you can, because we want people to get the money out. We want to get the money out to people. So this is, uh, there's, a, there's actually a, a, oh, there's a, bro, a, a, a a lovely little booklet here. I can get this sent around as well. It's called Government Working to Finan uh, with Finance Providers to Support SME Financing, and uh, so we'll get you we'll get you copies of this. It's uh, it's again it's a full list of all the different supports that we have, uh, whether it's through. Um, the uh, equity finance support or its uh, direct uh, uh, debt financing support. So there's all sorts of, you see, it's changing now. It used to be you go to the bank for a loan. That's no longer the way. When businesses are looking at loans, they're looking at maybe uh, looking at them from different from different different part ways of financing it. So uh, there's a lot of different supports. So I'll get that sent out. Brilliant. So we're very keen that, uh, you know, this is here for everybody to avail of. We want to give them the supports. So anything 
can do to help us with that, we'd appreciate it. Thank so you, So we'll, we'll get those sent around. And my, my third question is in relation to the local enterprise offices. And you said there's additional capital provision of 470,000 yeah. um, within the estimates. And I'm just wondering, how will this money be allocated through the various offices throughout the country? Will it be dependent on how well they're performing, or will it be dependent on, will it be demand-led, or? Um, yeah. 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 No. For, yeah. For, for for this year, yeah, it's going to be based on the commitments that they have. They have put in. Uh, mm. They have uh, indicated where they can spend this money before the end of the year, and then uh, next year, I have increased our budget by five million, and that will be, uh, you know, asking them to come forward with uh, proposals. But it'll be competitive based, so because we we have to make sure yeah. that the money is is well spent. But can I just say that the the local enterprise offices have really really been uh, really good in terms of uh, being the first port of call for businesses. They, they give huge support to small indigenous Irish companies and I'm very supportive of uh, the local enterprise offices and the great work that they do because the, the, the introduction to government, uh, you know, the, the first port of call and, and they're the people that introduce businesses to the supports that are out there that government has available to them. And it might be always about money, it could be about soft supports, about helping businesses to to upskill in terms of their management structures and encouraging them to do um, to do to do um, um, invest in in innovate or in in research and development. So there's there's different uh, supports they give. So uh, as I said, I, I have huge regard for them. I think they've bedded in well into the local authority structure, and the, there's a greater focus now, as you know, in local authorities on 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 enterprise and on supporting businesses. So that's good too. And just to say that in the 29 allocation. 2019 allocation of 5 million, we're asking them to, to roll out uh, customs training for SMEs. So we have to take a step back in time now and go back to the, all this, uh, yeah. these procedures that we had thought we, we wouldn't need again. <laughs> Okay. Well, Minister, I'd like to concur with your sentiments in relation to the local enterprise offices as well. I think they do a fantastic job. And even when people contact us as, as, as uh, um, Aractus members and, and, you know, they have an idea, it's fantastic. You can send them on to the local enterprise office. It's, it's a one-stop shop that works yeah. extremely well. And they will signpost them where they should go to. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're quick to have the bad, the bad word, but I think in fairness to the local enterprise offices, they have bedded in very well with the local authorities. And, you know, the, the, the feedback is always very, very positive. So it's fantastic to see that there will be uh, extra allocation for them this year within the estimates. Um, Deputy Quinn Livin, would you yeah. like to come Thanks very much. And can I just court our, agree with your comments on the Leos? It's very, very important. I met him again recently in Limerick, and you know it is your first port of call when people come into you, especially SMEs. So basically, I have a couple of questions, and they're both under Program A. But firstly, to thank the Minister for her presentation and for our department for helping with that, for the notes they sent on to us earlier. And I um, just want to say I'm particularly pleased to see the redistribution of the 26 million euros benefit in Science Foundation Ireland. I think that's really, really important. And also the, the new loan scheme that aims to help businesses with the effects of Brexit. I'd also know what, at this opportunity just to take a, make a point about I would like to have seen additional funding for the, given to the uh, Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement. Um, Sinn Féin, as we've said before, are not satisfied with the current level of funding or staffing and would have preferred to see greater emphasis placed on tackling white collar crime in Ireland. And I understand, Minister, you're bringing forward new legislation in this area, but I can't see any reason why additional staff wouldn't have been, or personnel couldn't have been hired now and transfer over to the new agency when it's up and running. It's a sad state of affairs in the country where we see people going to prison almost on a weekly basis for not paying their TV licence, etc. But um, nobody's been brought to justice, for instance, on the track of mortgage scandal that is estimated to be an expense of a billion euros. So we do, we do genuinely need major reform in the way we deal with uh, white collar crime. And so that's just a comment on the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement, and hopefully we'll, I look forward to the legislation I'm bringing forward, and we'll look at that. So back to the estimates and the couple of questions I have. The first one is in relation to Enterprise Ireland and their own resource income. I understand that, I think I've asked this question before, but I understand that Enterprise Ireland can currently take a 10% equity in business. So my question basically is, is that, the, is that the legal limit or is that a policy decision we've made? And if it is a policy decision, what is the high limit we could go to if we wanted to? So that's the first question on EI. And the second question is on the future growth loan scheme. 
and the, I think Deputy Butler might have mentioned a bit of it, but the, mm -hmm. the question is, um, is there an estimate for the number of businesses that can avail of the scheme? Is there, like, is there a cap on, on the number of businesses that can apply for that? How many years will the scheme be in operation for? Will there be a budget allocation needed for the scheme every year? And what are you anticipating interest rates will be set for on this scheme? Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Is that okay? I can go down. All right, thank you. Uh, just, to, just in relation to Enterprise Ireland, yeah, you referred to the 10% equity in uh, businesses. That's, that is a policy decision because we don't want, we don't want to, to crowd out other investors uh, in terms of, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's working well actually uh, in terms of uh, what, uh, you know, what it's doing. And if Enterprise Ireland did feel at any stage that they wanted to, uh, to increase that, well, that's fair enough. They can come and talk to us and we'll, we'll certainly look look at it. Uh, for further growth loan scheme uh, at the minute, uh, there, is, uh, there is no cap on, on the number that can apply for it. There's a budget annually of six million per annum for the next three years. So uh, that's, uh, that, that's built into that. So that's, that, should be, uh, that should be sufficient there. Uh, just to, sorry, and just to say, oh yeah, the, loan, the future growth loan scheme, the scheme will have exchequer uh, cost of 62 million over a four year period with 25 million uh, euro provided by the department 25 million divided provided by the department of agriculture food and the marine and the remaining 37 million provided by the department of business enterprise and innovation so it's a 300 million euro fund and uh, as i say that's the that's that's the cap on it and that's the exposure that it or we're taking the risk to the tune of 62 million and is there All right yeah and uh, it'll last uh, three year three years uh, from from the date of the launch Okay, and, and the interest rate is below five percent. Below five percent. Below five percent. Yeah, and just to say about the the the, the ODCE, uh, I have increased the budget of the ODCE by one million uh, for next year. Now their budget, their monies has increased over the last number of years because uh, when this report that came out yesterday, it, it showed very clearly that uh, they didn't have the necessary skill set uh, back in uh, between 2008 and 2012. Uh, they didn't have uh, the, the you know the, the as I said, the people that they needed to do this complex type of work or this investigation. So since then, they have employed uh, eight uh, forensic accountants, uh, a digital forensic specialist, two enforcement portfolio managers, two enforcement lawyers, uh, and uh, the, the guard that she will lead in all criminal investigations. Uh, so um, they have, you know, we have increased their resources. And uh, I, uh, as I say, it's. Uh, and I'm on the 15th of November, the number of department staff currently in place in the ODCE is 41 staff. Uh, so uh, there's been and, and uh, seven Gardaí have been uh, assigned to it as well. So it has been it has been getting increased resources. And to be honest with you, it's doing a really good job. Uh, and they have had a number of successful um, uh, uh, prosecutions, which they brought, was brought through the DPP. It was this one particular case. It was a very high-profile case. It was an extremely complex case. And uh, I, I just want to say that clearly, that the office uh, of the uh, or the director uh, and the staff in the ODCE are really doing good work. And, uh, and, and, and just in case the wrong message would go out, and they have uh, done. There's been, you know, a number of, of prosecutions over the last uh, over the last while. Yes, thank you for your answer there, Minister. Uh, look, I don't have a problem with the staff who work there. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've spoken to a few of them. Um, the director is coming into the yeah. next meeting we have yeah. in, in the new year or whatever, so we're looking forward to that exchange of views there. We just want the, we just want the agency to be strengthened. We yeah, well, we're doing that. Additional yeah. funding to go into it or whatever. And just one question, I probably didn't say it properly. When I meant the cap uh, of number of businesses, I also meant the cap of the, mo the money they can you know, draw down. So what loan could they get? What's the size of a loan the company could get? Um, they can get up to 500,000 unsecured or a maximum loan of 3 million euros. Okay. Thank you. Minister, if I could just come back in there, just to refer back to the, the, the ODCE and, and, and that high profile trial earlier on in the year. And I understand what you said. Um, in the doll that you, you know, on, under advice you got from the Attorney General that you can only publish a 30 page document in relation to it. Would that be circulated to our committee as well? 
Um, yeah, we have. Yes, that is uh, that's available now. It's the it's the account of the failings that was identified by the judge. So the judge very clearly um, he, um, he 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 outlined the issues that needed to be addressed. So uh, we have taken those all. They're in that report. That report is available, and we're, we're going to act. In fact, we have acted on a lot of them. But uh, we're going to bring new legislation through, uh, which will uh, set up the ODCE as a, an independent statutory body, and it'll have autonomy then uh, to, to uh, employ the, the particularly specialised skill set that it needs. Uh, because it goes out into the market to get those, so they'll, they'll, they'll have that uh, power. We'll also look at giving them uh, additional powers uh, uh, um, in terms of investigative powers, uh, which um, uh, there's a number of things that, uh, that the legislation will cover. Uh, I have it here now, just to, give you, just to be accurate. <laughs> um, they're going to, they'll have more powers to improve search uh, and entry uh, and to enhance its ability to gather evidence that is electronically held. Um, it, we're going to have more improvements in the supervision of, of liquidators, so they'll have more power to do that, uh, and a more simplified system when they have to go to the High Court uh, for access uh, to phone records. So those are extra things that they needed. We'll provide that in the new legislation, but I can assure you uh, they've got the, the, an extra million next year to help them uh, to, to transition to, a, to an independent body, and uh, they do very, very important work, because they make sure that companies work, operate with in the law, and we, they deserve to be supported. So, uh, just just to say that, and this is the report here. It's an account of the shortcomings identified by the judge of the circuit court concerning an investigation by the office of the director of corporate enforcement. So, these are all the things uh, in this, and it, it's, a, it's it's on the website. So, okay, thank you, you Minister. All right, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, Minister, I just want to ask a question in relation to Programme B, and I, I, I know the Minister isn't here today, but you, you might be able to facilitate me with an answer. So it's, it's, it's the innovation support, the additional capital allocation of 10.74 million, and I see 8.74 million has been allocated to um, four, di four different um, Trinity College, National University of Ireland, Minute and Tyndall. And then the other two million in capital monies has been provided to the programme for research in third level institutions. But when I looked at the list the whole way down, I noticed there's only one institute of technology was successful, DIT. And I have to say I'm disappointed and I, I'm open to correction, but that's, that's how I'm reading it. Because as you know, the institutes of technology sometimes are seen as the poor relations because they can't borrow off balance sheet. Do you know, they can't borrow themselves and they find it very, very difficult at times. And I suppose, is there any particular reason why only one institute of technology was successful and all the other monies allocated were to universities? Yeah, I think uh, that fund was initially targeted at universities, and they were the target. But uh, the, the, there is one, obviously, institute that, that did get funding, and I, I agree with you. I think the institutes do great work, and I think also that the colleges of further education do great work. Uh, and uh, we have been working very closely with. Um, with, with the Department of Education in rolling out apprenticeship schemes, and they're mainly rolled out through the, the through the, the the local uh, college or further education centres, uh, and indeed, um, we're we're doing more work with the institutes in terms of developing. Um, 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 the right skill set and the right skill mix that's needed for industry. So uh, I see a bigger role for them in working uh, with with industry in, in doing what they're, uh, you know, in, in uh, training people and giving them the right skills. Just in terms, uh, I, I know the Department of Education and Skills uh, announced an additional investment for the the, the institutes of technology, and uh, this include this included a budget 2018 announcements of 200 million euro for public private partnerships in the Institute of Technology sector and 257 million for investment in the higher education sector, including for research. And then Budget 2019 saw announcements of 57 million to be invested in higher education initiatives in 2019, along with capital investment of 150 million being allocated to the higher education, further education and training and research sectors. 
Okay. So, but I do take, I, I take your point. They Thank do, you, Minister. Yeah, and, and just for information purposes, currently what this committee is looking at is we're looking at the whole issue around apprenticeships yeah. and the very low number of, of female apprentices. And last True. week, actually, we had solace in, but we actually had two people in her. We had a 23-year-old girl from Dublin who was a qualified electrician with ESB. And she told us her story, how she decided to go down that route. She studied engineering for six months, didn't like it, uh, became an apprentice. So there were 75 taken on by the ESB four years ago, and three of them were girls. And we also had another chap with us from Wexford, and he was a career changer at 30 years of age, and he has just completed a level eight in insurance. And it was fantastic to hear. He, he had started work at 16 in, 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 in the tourism industry. Um, he was a bar manager, and he decided to change his career. So we're, we, 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 the committee are actually looking at, at you know, trying to promote as best we can um, that third-level college doesn't have to be the only way forward, that it's not for everyone, and that we just believe that we really have to put a special focus on, um, on the different trades. And what we were also hoping to look at, and we, 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 we will send on a report when we have it completed, that you know there are some people that they're tradesmen all their life, but when they come to their early 50s, um, you know, especially if they've been working on the buildings, and that they might be in the wet trades, that it doesn't suit them any longer, and that they might have to change their career, or they might have to upskill or move into a different area. And that has been very obvious to us as a committee, that that situation is out there. Um, so it's, it's just to let you know that the work we've been doing, we, we always try to be um, as constructive as possible here in the committee and I know there's a, there's a crossover with the Department of Education in relation to skills, but we, we really focus it on, on from a point of view of the actual apprentices and to actually have people come in here and tell us, and they were very, very positive. They were two very, very positive stories. And I think it's an important message for the, the department to get out as well, that you know there are options there for career changers as young as, you know, as in their 30s or whatever. And as I said, we're certainly going to be looking at um, people who might have worked on the buildings for 35 years of their life, and then they find at age 50 that it's no longer uh, suitable for them because of the, the stresses and strains on their body. Okay. So any further questions or anything to add? Okay. Okay. Are you okay, Mr. Just, yeah, just to say, Chair, I, I absolutely agree with you. Mm. Um, I am a, a, a great uh, believer and a great supporter, like you, of, um, of apprenticeships. Uh, in fact, I'm attending one on, in January. It's the launch of a new apprenticeship scheme. It takes a wee while to get them together because it involves in, in the whole of industry, but it's one in my own county and uh, it's, uh, it's exciting. And uh, the Minister for Education is going to attend it as well. And only two weeks ago, I was at a, an award ceremony for apprenticeships four years they had completed and it you're right though there was very few women now it was all men but uh, it, again it was in the craft apprenticeship and uh, it, it's it was great it and it's and and some of them got up to tell their story like they came in here to tell you their story and it it's it, it, it's a it's a win-win for everybody it Thank really you, is Minister. and it means young people can continue their education uh, and and stay at home they don't all have to come uh, to the city, to the universities, and sometimes that just works out better with their with their with their family circumstances, because uh, some of them actually do some part-time work in the country as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, Minister, um, thank you very much. That concludes our consideration of the Supplementary Estimate 2018 for Vote 32, Business, Enterprise and Innovation. In accordance with Standing Order 90, a message to that effect will be sent to the Clerk of the Dáil. Under Standing Order 89.2, the message is deemed to be the report of the Committee. Again, Minister, I would like to thank you and your officials for attending today's meeting. The Select Committee is now adjourned until next Tuesday, the 11th of December at 4pm.